Hello Thrivers, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm focusing on codependents and what they strive and seek to try to get from narcissistic relationships. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because if you don't understand the dynamics of what's going on, then you can tend to be pouring yourself out until you're empty or yanking yourself inside out like a pretzel trying to get these things from someone that refuses to give them to you. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what those five things are, why you'll never get them from narcissistic relationships, and how to get them. So if this resonates with you, then let's dive in and get started. And just a quick reminder for anyone that's hopping from video to video and trying to deepen their healing journey, and yet if you feel like you're stuck and you're just not moving forward, make sure you check out the links in my description box because I always have resources, online workshops, face-to-face -face coaching to help you on your healing journey. Okay, number one is codependents seek to be seen by narcissists. See if this resonates with you, okay? So what I hear a lot in my face-to-face -face coaching is that the codependent, whether it's a man or a woman, right? And I'm actually gonna use a man's um, situation right now. A man that is married to a narcissist and he is just doing and doing and doing, right? He's, he's helping with the kids, he's cleaning, he's doing laundry, he's working full time, and yet the wife never sees or appreciates or acknowledges all that he's doing. In fact, what will often happen is there will be comments that make him feel like he never does enough. So what happens is, you know, everyone brings something to the table or should bring something to the table in a relationship. But what happens is the narcissist takes a step back and does a little less. The codependent does a little more. And it goes on and on until in the relationship, the codependent is doing so much that they often wind up getting sick right? Not only are they doing so much, all they want, and I hear this all the time, all I wish is that he or she would notice and acknowledge it. And yet it's never acknowledged. And not only does it not get acknowledged, but when the codependent isn't doing and doing and doing and doing, and maybe they're actually just resting <laughs> or taking some time for themselves, right? Then the narcissist will often make them feel guilty as if they're doing something wrong just by enjoying something that is pleasurable to them that doesn't involve giving to the narcissist so they wind up with this tremendous amount of guilt why does that happen well a narcissist is never going to see you okay in normal relationships each person sees each other's value. To see the other person's value doesn't take away from who you are, right? Giving compliments doesn't make you less than. Appreciating somebody doesn't make them better than you, at least not in the mind of a relatively healthy person. But a narcissist will view that as like a change in the status quo. First of all, they're always up here. To acknowledge all that you do means they have to appreciate you and in their mind that means they're down here now and it's a position that their false image and their ego will never allow them to be in so if you're a man right and you're doing all of your work responsibilities and taking care of the home and the kids no matter how much you do it will never be seen if you're a woman and you're doing all of the home responsibilities, the children, and you're the primary breadwinner, which I have seen this a lot, it doesn't matter how much you do, it's never gonna be seen and appreciated. And it has nothing to do with anything you're doing wrong. It has everything to do with their mentality and their mindset and how they view giving that appreciation. And I say this because I've seen people literally almost give all of themselves to the point of being ready to like drop because they have nothing left inside of them, all in this effort to be seen and it doesn't take place. The second thing codependents seek from narcissists is to be heard. So in a normal, healthy relationship, it's normal, I keep saying the word normal, but it's normal to um, 
try to see each other's point of view, especially in a disagreement. Even if you don't agree with the person, there's a desire to understand what they're trying to say. But if you are with a malignant narcissist, I always say in a disagreement with a narcissist, they don't listen, they pause. It's almost like there's a button hit and they stop talking, you express yourself, you give your point of view, you give your perspective, and then when you stop, they hit play and they continue on as if you didn't say anything, as if they have no ability to see your perspective. And again, when you don't understand what's going on, codependents fall into this cycle of, if I can just say it the right way, if I just explain it, you know, if I can just get through, then everything will be great. And yet, year after year after year after decade, nothing changes. And the reason is, it's not because you're not saying it clearly. It's not because there's any lack in you. It's because the toxic person's mentality is there's only one perspective that exists and it's mine. And because that is so hardwired into their psyche, they don't even try to understand your perspective. They don't even try to see your point of view. So because their perspective is like that, they will never hear and understand you and your perspective. The third thing that I see codependents strive after with narcissists is for self-esteem. They don't feel valuable unless the other person validates them and says something nice, then they can feel valuable or beautiful or um, good enough. It's almost like their self-esteem is put into the hands of a narcissist. And self-esteem is esteem from self. It comes from inside. It's not dependent on another person's view of you. But if you're battling codependency tendencies, you may not even realize that that's what you're doing is seeking your esteem by getting permission from them to even have it. And again, since narcissists would view valuing you as putting you here and them as less than, it's never going to happen. And not giving yourself self-esteem because the narcissist doesn't see your value, to me, is as equivalent of a beautiful person standing in front of a blind person. And because the blind person is incapable of seeing their beauty, that beautiful person feels ugly, unattractive, and unlovable based on the blind person's lack of being able to see their beauty. Now, it sounds kind of silly when you think of it like that, but in a way, that's what codependents do with narcissists. Because they can't see it, because they refuse to acknowledge it, then you take your esteem or your value and it's, you don't feel it. The fourth thing codependents chase from narcissists is respect. Uh, respecting their boundaries. Now this usually happens when they're starting to heal. Okay, usually in the beginning they don't even realize they don't have boundaries. But at some point, thanks to so many people's videos that are out there on YouTube, they start to realize they need boundaries. And so they start putting them down. What happens when you put down a boundary with a narcissist? That means you have rights. <laughs> and sadly, the narcissist doesn't view you as being allowed to have rights. Think about it. I mean, it sounds kind of weird to say a person gives you no rights, but think about it. Are you allowed to have your own thoughts? No. Are you allowed to feel your own feelings? No. When you're happy, they get mad. So are you allowed to be happy? No. Are you allowed to take time for yourself? No, they make you feel guilty. Are you allowed to be your authentic self? No, you have to do and be everything that they want from you. So think about it. You're not even allowed to have those rights. So putting down a boundary is like, you know, they think that you putting down a boundary is you putting yourself here when actually you're just putting yourself on the same level as them. So codependents, as they're learning, they'll start putting down that boundary. And what does the narcissist do? They test it. They cross it. They want to show you that no matter what you do, they are the ones in control. And I get a lot of people in my face-to-face -face coaching that tell me, Michelle, but I put down the boundary, but they don't respect it. And they're waiting for the narcissist to find the ability to respect their boundaries. 
and that doesn't happen. So there's a difference between putting down a boundary and enforcing a boundary, right? You have to put it down first, but the follow-up is the enforcement of the boundary. So for example, what does that look like? Let's say you have low contact with a narcissistic parent and there are certain topics that you don't want to talk about with your parent. Let's say you put down your boundary. Look, mom or dad, you know, this is something I don't want to discuss. Have you ever noticed that the second you say, I don't want to do this, that's exactly what the person does over and over and over again. So what will happen? You put down the boundary. If you're waiting for the narcissist to respect it so that it's upheld, you're setting yourself up to be disappointed and frustrated. The enforcement comes when you know what to do when, when, not if, when the narcissist crosses that boundary. For example, in my case, certain people that I would have conversations with, the second that was a boundary that I had set up with different people where I said, you know, this, this, is, t this is a topic I don't want to discuss. And sure enough, the conversation would start out really nice with, the, with this person if I talked to them again. Really nice and really wow and you start lowering your walls and then suddenly, boom, they go right for the topic that you said you didn't want to discuss. And here's the thing. See, people that battle codependency tendencies, sometimes we think that enforcing a boundary is mean or it's, you know, you have to be rude or a jerk to do it, but that's not true. In fact, if you enforce the boundary with anger, frustration, bitterness in any way, the narcissist is still feeding from you with narcissistic supply. That negative energy of, you know, your anger, your frustration, they love to be able to provoke in you. So when I would enforce my boundary, I would do it as happy and peaceful as possible. And the peace didn't come from what the person was doing. In other words, we have to change our mindset. Instead of thinking, oh my goodness, there they are again, you know, crossing my boundary. I can't believe it. I can't, why do they do this? Blah, blah, blah. Instead of going down that rabbit hole of that negative thinking, I would be like, yes, look at how I'm able to enforce my boundary. I'm so proud of myself. This is so awesome that I know how to enforce my boundaries. This is great. So when I would think like that, I could answer not faking positivity, but actually feeling positive and proud of myself. And I would just say something like, you know what? I am so sorry to interrupt you. It was so nice talking to you. I hope you have an awesome day. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. And hang up. So in other words, waiting for the other person to to respect your boundaries is never going to happen. And the last thing that I want to mention that codependents chase after is to feel loved. And I get it. I mean, we all want to feel lovable and loved by the people we have relationships with. But narcissists don't love people the way we expect love to be. Narcissists view people as things that serve them. They kind of view their significant other the same way I view my phone. I love my phone in the sense that I take it everywhere I go, right? And it, it helps me with a lot of stuff and I appreciate its existence because of what it does for me. But the second my phone breaks, I mean, it's, it's purely conditional, you know? <laughs> my love with my phone is conditional love. Once it breaks, I'm gonna wind up getting another one and it's not gonna hurt me or bother me to do that. Unfortunately, malignant narcissists view people in that same sense. So somebody that's striving to feel love from somebody that's incapable of giving it is only setting themselves up to be hurt, to have their self-esteem eroded over and over again. So, okay, we talked about the five things that people chase. We kind of explained, I'm hoping I explained, um, why narcissists can never give that to you, but now I wanna focus on how you can get it.